The following program is sponsored by the Greek, Ely's Radio Shack dealer at 570 Altman in downtown Ely, and brought to you as a public service by Georgetown Media in Ely, Nevada. White Pine County Commission meeting, April 22, 2020. Yeah, so um, you guys can, uh, after, just hang out out there and then we'll call you in. Okay. And then see, after George, I don't know if you're going to stick around after your items or not, but then as we just maintain 10 people in the room. I'm just here for the public comment, so as soon as that's done, I can check. Yeah, okay. perfect. But I'm, I'm, going, I'm always over in compliance. Okay, so just start with the public comment. I don't know if you should, I think you should. No, no, we're good. Oh, I'll we're good. good. Okay. You sure? Yeah, good morning and welcome I can hear to the uh, uh, regular scheduled uh, meeting of the White Pine County Commission on this Wednesday, April 22nd. Would you all please stand and join us in the pledge? And uh, Lori, why don't you do this today? Happy to, thank you. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As normal, we will uh, take the first moment of the meeting and do reflection, prayer, whatever you'd like. So, for the first moment, it's a meditation time. Thank you. Okay, we'll open the meeting with uh, public comment, and uh, we have several on the phone, uh, Mike, or? Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, come forward, please. Up to there? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Yeah. Good morning. I'm going to probably use a minute and a half as a citizen, a minute and a half as a council. And yeah, just identify yourself. Well, I'm right? Jim Walmart, I live at 805 Avenue I, as a resident, a citizen, the Ely City Councilman on the other minute and a half. Regarding the agenda item on the Snickle grants, I just personally think truck stops and playgrounds fields, not a very good mix. I've done a short term tour of duty of truck driving over the road. Exciting times happen in, park, in the, the parking lot at the truck stop. Our truck stop's new, but it could get bigger, and a little more crazier. I also think it's pretty dangerous for kids to have to cross Great Basin and Veterans Boulevard with all the truck traffic plus normal traffic. I think, again, we're taking prime commercial property away from the prosperous of the city and the county. You know, we got a, a lot of growth is going that direction for the businesses. I think it's important to keep that going. There's already talked about more commercial building on the Veterans Boulevard. And the success of Ely and White Pine County depends on tourism. You know, we're remote people love coming here not only for the rec recreational, but you know, it's a place to get away from. I truly believe that no matter where the railroad brings a lot of people to our area, they eat here, they sleep here, and they put money back into our economy. Let's, let's put improvements in the marriage field. It was built in 1982, 38 years ago. We need some improvements. The, the parking lot is worse or equal to city streets, full of potholes. The county road department done a great job the last two years trying to maintain it, hitting where it wasn't so pothole field. I think they've done good on that. But we need to get some scoreboards that work. We need to get the bathrooms up to speed. You know, if, if it smells like urine, you go in there, they need to be upgraded like it did at the fairgrounds. The concession stand needs to be upgraded. Field one has very poor soil. They water it constantly. That's why the only way to keep it green. There's nothing there. You gotta keep it green and fertilize it to keep it green. Okay, now pass off to city council. 
The idea of the Smithville thing was, came as a surprise to me when I read it in the paper. Nothing was ever brought before the city council to them. And I asked the five councilmen, nobody knew about the Smithville stuff, you know. And I talked with uh, Kyle at the convention center. He personally thought the proposed park behind Love was in the county. So I said, no, it's in the city. So we, we need to get more transparency out to the people on what's going on. So I, in the agenda in May, I'm going to have an agenda item on there with map, aerial drawing, to get out to the people. Come down, give us your ideas, what you want. So the citizens can have some input. And like Kyle said, he said, a core of people presented the Sniffle stuff. That was a core of people is not the will of the people. We got to get the citizens. I think there's great ideas. Some of the ideas, first of all, is all the lights in the park down there. We had one fall off. I mean, at the time Commissioner Bybee was there, it landed right behind City Hall. It fell off the pole. Aaron Huntington, uh, his working for Energy Energy, he climbed every one of them, sounded them. He tied a safety chain around the heads so they, if they fall, it's just going to slide down. So hopefully that'll end that. But you know, there's more need for more picnic areas, off street parking, cement slabs for volleyball and, and basketball. We can hold small concerts there. The, the sound is, is great right there on Broadband Park. So I just think take your consideration on those ideas when you talk about this. Thank you. We're trying right. to just stay true to the three minutes. Thanks for the few extra seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have a good day. Uh, any more public comment? Anyone got public comment? Anyone on the phone? Yes, Mark uh, on the phone. Who's this? Mark, Mark Bassett. Okay. Mark Bassett on the phone. Volume up. Uh, good morning. Can you turn the volume up? Hold on, Hold on a second, there. Mark. All right. Okay. Is that good? A little better. Can you hear me now? Yes. What do you say? Good morning. When you raise the Sniffle project, more than ever, I'm asking for your support for Ely's number one tourist attraction, the railroad. On April 4th, it was supposed to be the start of the railroad's 33, 33rd season. Obviously, that didn't happen. Our closure has had a negative impact, not only on the railroad, but also on tourism in White Pine County. Over the past 32 years, it's been estimated that visitors to the railroad left over $50 million in White Pine County. The dream of the railroad started in 1983 when Kennecott closed. It was believed the railroad could be developed into a major tourist attraction. Over 32 years, that is exactly what happened. Over a half million tourists have visited the railroad and they have left tens of millions of tourist dollars in White Pine County. Some of this success can be attributed to the investments made in the railroad by the Sniffler grants. These grants paid for desperately needed basics. Paid parking lots, street lighting, lighted tape, walking trails, and restrooms. These projects allowed us to provide the basics that visitors expect when they visit our National Historic Landmark. Since the first Nicola grant eight years ago, this investment is paying dividends to the community. Our ridership has increased almost 30%. Visitor spending in White Pine County has been steadily increasing from $40.8 million in 2013 to $45.9 million in 2018, according to data from the Nevada Division of Tourism. Now we are facing the worst economic disaster since 1929. When you decide the ranking of the proposed Nicola grant, I ask that you rank the railroad as number one. We need to maximize and support the tourist attractions that we have in place. The approval of the railroad Nicola grant will assist in the economic recovery of White Pine County. For starters, it should keep a 12-person construction crew working for 12 to 18 months. Once the project is completed, the railroad will add two to three permanent positions and perhaps three to four seasonal positions. In the community itself, I would estimate the creation of 11 to 15 permanent positions and 18 to 26 seasonal positions. Your support of the railroad Nicola grant as the number one project is a solid vote for the economic recovery of White Pine County. Our grant supports not only the railroad, but also the economic renaissance 
says beginning in McGill. Our project is not pie in the sky, nor does it need any dollars from the county. Okay. It is a proven gener generator of dollars for our community. Yeah. You're three minutes up, Mark. We're trying to stay oh, okay. right on the three minutes. You're, you're up. Thank you very much for your comments. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is there any other public comment out there on the phone? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask uh, George, you have public comment today? I do. you got to get rid of that three-minute rule. How are people going to talk to you folks? The best they can. That's not good. Mr. Chairman, on your agenda, item 2A1, you're going to consider sending a letter to the governor <coughs> for exemption of COVID-19 precautions. The county needs to follow the state's lead, which is based on medical facts. The numbers of those infected continues to go up once they flatten, and then go down should you consider relaxing conditions of caution, which you have recommended by which have been uh, recommended by experienced health officials. The county must be consistent with the state's extension of the emergency. Protect your responders, protect your health care people. Mr. Chairman, on your agenda item 2C, 1C, you consider possible approval of changes and amendments to the current PE airport fee structure. On your fee schedule dated July 1, 2015, you have a provision for ride camping at $10 a day or $180 a month. I'm requesting clarification. Is that provision for pilots, the general public, or construction workers? There should be no dry camping. I, as well as other property owners, have vacant lots that we are not allowed to use by your building inspector who selectively enforces city and county rules and regulations. I remind you, we pay taxes. The airport is not. Mr. Chairman, on your agenda item 5C, you consider the approval to redefine the round 18 Stiffelman nomination related to the cultural co corridor as either, <coughs> either the county or city park project component presented with <coughs> presented under original proposal. The city broadband park must be the first choice, and the loves option should be dropped in favor of the indoor all-season fairgrounds event center, which offers year-round possibilities, possibilities versus seasonal or railroad events. Do not take prime commercial property off the tax roll. Quit buying your friend's property at taxpayers' expense. One person old, we are experiencing unprecedented commercial growth and economic residential development really has been identified as long-term and necessary priority. Why are you in the city enforcing laws? Your building inspector discriminates and is the single largest detriment to city and county growth. Next to them is all of you. Selective enforcement needs to stop. Bring in a newspaper that's fair and balanced. Once the public sees what's going on, we'll see how they react. Mr. Chairman, I've not received a copy of the resignation letter of the former emergency management director. This is the third or fourth request. I thought the third time was a charm. Mr. Chairman, you know who sits on the uh, county commission and is yet to account for missing rental monies from the SNS Railroad? That person needs to account for the money and resign. Mr. Chairman, you know who has yet to you know what with a non ADA compliant sidewalk located you know where? You know who sits on you know what board setting down you know what rules and you know and you know who is not complying with you know what? They need to resign or comply. You know I'm not you know what I'm talking about. Let's that's clean up the act here. Okay, George, that's the three minutes ago. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay. Is there any other public comment out there, uh, either in person or on the phone? Mike, do you see that? Uh, yes. Go ahead. This is Lindsay Walsh. I do have a public comment. Go ahead. I was just had a question for the commissioners regarding 2A1 on the agenda. Have any of you guys hired any private epidemiologists outside of Dr. VN? So in public comment, Lacey, it's not a dialogue. Um, we don't usually do questions that way. We don't okay. respond to questions. We, we'll take your comment, okay. but there's no, no, there's no response. Okay. That was my question for the public then. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else out there on the phone? We have no one in the building, but is there anybody on the phone who also wants to speak? You're welcome. Mr. Um, Chairman, this is Tim. Uh, Tim Bunch. Go ahead, Tim. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to address uh, Mr. Chachis on that uh, letter of resignation. That was submitted to the Ely Times. So if, if he's interested in receiving that letter, he can contact the Ely Times that was supplied for them on their request. No, good enough. She won't print my letters to the editor. So maybe Tim it's his responsibility. Tim, you have a copy if you can get it. That'd be all right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Is there any other public comment out there right now? We're on the phone, and so in the building there's none. Is there one last call for public comment on the phone? Hearing none and seeing none, we're going to move forward with the county commission meeting, and we are going to go to... Uh, uh, Page two, item uh, one, it's a 9 a.m. And uh, discussion for possible action, approval to waive the property taxes and building permits for taxpayers over the age of 70. This is brought by Mr. Chatches. Uh, Mike, I'll be 70 next week, so I'm good to vote. Yeah, you're all right. Okay, so uh, he is requesting that we waive all property taxes and, and building permits for taxpayers over the age of 70. I, this is just something that I don't know that we can do, but I'm going to ask right away, right off the bat, for a motion to approve. Or, yeah. I got to come. Approve. Hang on a second. We've had public comment, Mike, right? I'm yes. on the agenda. You put me on there. Did you put George on the agenda? Okay. George may speak. But you can control how long you allow him to speak. Okay. What do you say? I can control how long you speak. Go ahead, George. Just make it. You got to speak up, Councilor. Make it as brief and to the point as you can. Mr. Uh, Chairman, when I asked for the waiver of the property taxes, that was county taxes only. You guys aren't treating me properly. I don't want to pay into that state taxes because that's where I intend to go to next for assistance in helping me with my uh, situation here. Again, your building inspector will not uh, give me a permit, approves shoddy workmanship by uh, contractors, then he tells me I hired someone uh, that's a poor contractor. Now, I pay something. taxes, I pay taxes, and I expect equal protection under the law. You're not giving me that. So if you're not going to give me that, I don't want to give you any taxes to support any of these entities that don't do their job. So I'm asking for a waiver of the um, county property taxes and the building permits for taxpayers over 70. You gave consideration to buddies of yours. Uh, okay, thousands of dollars. This is only a few pennies. We're not going to listen to that, George. I, well, I, re I respect your comment on the property tax. You're going to stay right there. You have a motion. You you gave your spiel. I'm going to ask the commission if I can get a vote to approve. And we can, let's see what takes place. How's that? That's fine. Okay, I'll ask for a motion to approve. You know, I made a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll ask again, do I have a motion to approve? You stay with your motion to approve? Mm -hmm. We have one motion to approve. Do I have a second? Last call, motion to approve. Mr. Bybee has made a motion. There's been no second. Dies for lack of motion. Lack of vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The next items, item two through eight, are listed under Mr. Chatches. There are I put this on there, they should be under me. Each one of those, I have a response to all the things he's brought up to the commission over the years, or as many as I can remember. And I, uh, I did a, a survey, so I'm going to answer each and every question as they, as they appear. So I'm gonna start with number two. Number two was discussion for possible action, approval to refund the business license fees to George Chatches in light of the ordinance repealing the business license requirement in 2019. And, what I have on that one there is the action to taken to repeal the business license fees was effective from that day forward. Any fees paid prior were non-refundable. The vote on that was unanimous. All fees after that are hereby waived, and that was done in, in 2019. That's the, that's the answer to item number two. Item number three. Hold it. Okay. We're not legally on the agenda. I got you. I got you. Okay. Okay. Once you create an ordinance or a regulation, it pertains to everybody for a given period of time. You don't just have it for a few months and then somebody says, oh, I don't like this. We're going to end it. We all pay or nobody pays. It's just that simple. 
Failure to collect from everybody is upon you folks and your staff. Failure to collect is mismanagement, malfeasance, misfeasance, nonfeasance. I want my money back. So do those others that paid it in good faith. There's nothing in the law that says this is the uh, amount we're going to collect until we change our mind and depends on who pays. Baloney. I want my money back as well as others who paid in. Period. When we made that, it was in effect for a period of time. Uh, there was a motion brought, excuse me, there was a motion brought forward to repeal that. It was acted on and we did repeal the business license fee. We went over the fact that some people had paid prior. We discussed it. The business license fee was repealed from that moment on. Anyone who had paid prior because of the complex of going out, the who paid, who didn't pay, was voted on that we would keep those fees in place. But as of that date, we would move forward and there'd be no more business license fee. You have not paid a business license fee. You're treated the same as everybody else. So the answer, the answer to that, George, is during the commission meeting, during the vote, we voted unanimous to repeal it. But we also said those who had paid for that year, that was okay, but that's the way it is. So that I'm just giving you the answer that I have for that, George. Yeah, I make one clarification too. Yes, two of the members that supported that ordinance uh, were not uh, elected back to the board. Uh, me and Mr. Polis replaced and we brought it up, so it's not like the same decision makers were in place. But Thank some you. of the people who brought that forward didn't disclose whether any of their friends or families had paid that business license, and that should have been done at the time that it was presented. The action was taken, George. You wanted an answer, so I'm giving you, George. I'm giving you the answer to that. I'm giving you okay. an answer too. Thank you very much. Item number three. Uh, oh wait, we'll take an action. Uh, what are we doing here, Mike? What did the item call for? And the item calls for action, but I don't know that it's to action. It's just a discussion. I'm re I'm answering Mr. Chatches's complaints. Is there a motion to refund Mr. Chatches's business license fee that he paid uh, properly and under the law at the time? Okay, that would be the motion. Okay. I look for a motion to approve to pay Mr. Chatches back his business license fees that he paid prior to the repealing of the business license fees. Yeah, right? all those fees, there is an actual ordinance in place and all those fees were lawfully paid. George followed the law and paid his fee. There are some people that did not pay their fee. Had the ordinance stayed in place, there was a process that we were going to follow to collect those fees. We just, it was a repealed before we even had that opportunity. There's no legal obligation to refund those who paid lawfully and this board has not given direction for us to go back and try to collect from those who didn't pay during that time because that also seemed like it was a waste of money because of how much it was even netting us as a county. So look, you, this board can vote to refund Mr. Chatzis his fee and you better be prepared to refund everyone else who paid that fee as well during that time period. Good for you, counselor. Or you can vote not to pay, <laughs> refund Mr. Chatzis his fee and deal with those consequences. Does anyone on the board have an opinion on this? No, but I would like to abstain. I wasn't here and don't, I have not researched the background as to why it was, and I wasn't privy to those conversations. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, it, there's no actual conflict. You, you can still vote if you wanted to, Ms. Carson, to refund that fee today, um, being in control of county finance as well, but okay. I understand your reason. Uh, I, I was against it from day one as a private citizen, so I I, I can I can see the argument as fun, uh, refunding everyone that paid in because I just think it was a it was a bad a bad move. Uh, S and W A didn't have to pay it, which really didn't make me happy. So I think I'll move to make a motion that everyone that did pay does get refunded, that including Mr. Chatters. You know, in ten different meetings, not once did you voice your opposition prior to becoming a commissioner. Yes, I did. I got, I got up on the stand and I voiced it. Absolutely. So, George, it's on record. Motion. We have a motion on the board. Do we have a second? I'll second it. You want to know how much? Question. Well, we ask question. Yes, I would like to know the information before I. How much did you collect, it. Nicole? Was it six hundred and something bucks? So the license fee was roughly, I think it was seventy-five dollars, and we had roughly one hundred and fifty businesses. Okay, so seventy-five hundred bucks. Did that, did that that many businesses pay the fee? Yes. County business. County business. So, for lawyers say, give us the give us the figure one more time on what what the cost would be. About seventy five hundred dollars. 
And in addition to that, you have to remember there will be processing fees because someone's going to have to set up 150 vendors and we're going to have to go ahead and do the work to reimburse those. So there will be additional overtime associated with that in my office to get that done. So, I mean, just so you're aware. So that would probably be up to $10,000. Because it's not an easy just cutting the check. I got you. Okay. We have a motion by Travis to pay back the fees to everyone, including Mr. Tatchis, and you have could, a second by Shane. You can even clarify to refund those fees to those who make contact to someone to request a refund as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Everybody clear with that? So the motion stands. Let me make sure we're legal here. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Because what we could do, all right, so the only action you can take today is to vote to refund George his fees today. However, we can have on the next agenda uh, the actual cost that we collected and what we anticipate the cost for a refund will be should everyone request a refund. Discuss whether we want to refund to everyone or only those who ask and give and maybe even discuss if we want to give a time frame for people to ask for a refund. Okay? So we can have that on the next agenda. Today you can only consider whether we fund George or not. Or lump them into the next agenda when we have it on the item next time. So when we do this, can we put, okay, let's say the motion passes and then we haven't voted yet. Can we put a, a termination date on those who want the refund? Can we set like 60 or 90 days? As long as we provide public notice, that's sufficient. I think that's fair. You're, so we could put a 60 day ceiling on it because we could carry this on for five years. Yeah. Put so, it in the paper. That, well, that's, that's part of it, George. I'm just asking. So we can, if we refund it, we can, to Mr. Chatches today because mm -hmm. he's on the agenda. And then after we advertise it legally, those that want can have up to 60 days. Is that a good enough number? It's up to you. So up to, okay, I would say up to 60 days to file for their refund. That, that would probably be another agenda yeah. item. Okay. Yeah, all these, all, all the other stuff we're talking about outside of just refunding George, we'll have to have on the next agenda. Okay. So I'll amend my motion to refund George, Mr. George Chatches, his his fee, and to put on the next agenda to do the same for the rest of the, uh, to, as an agenda, I'm to do the rest for the others that paid in proper public notice and proper deadline. Is that second good by you? Motion by Travis and the second amendment by Mr. Bidey. I'll call for any other question by anybody. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? No. Uh, Ian, Travis, Richard. Aye. And Lori, vote yes. Uh, Shane votes no. Okay, passes four to one. Okay, item number three. Item number three is uh, discussion for possible action, the approval to compensate George Chatches for the damage done to his property at the Old Nitty Grade School on High Street. On this one here, the damage was done to the Old Nitty Grade School is in the city limits, not the county. You, you are free to submit your claim to the, victim, to the Victims Relief Fund, not to the county commission. So your, your property, the grade school, and the vandalism that you uh, say has been done to your building is not the county. It's to the Victims Relief Fund and it's to the city. Your property is in the city, not the county. You continue to bring it up. Okay. So, so on this particular item, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm on equal protection number as well. I reported to the Sheriff's Office, which is also a county entity. I don't know which, uh, uh, whether it's the county juvenile court or whether it's the uh, district court, I don't know who's supposed to have the hearing. All I'm asking for is the damage uh, that I incurred. That's all. It, uh, on one uh, on one location, I gave a picture of an individual that was uh, involved. I'm not saying he did it because I don't know. But he was with a group that happened to be at that place. On the second incident, uh, one turned himself in. Another one came and identified himself to my uh, self at the store. And I've done nothing. So it isn't that the county is involved, it is, to some extent. But George, directly it's not. Your property's in the city. 
The sheriff's office, the courts are not the county commission. The county commission are not that. That's your responsibility. Well, tell them they can all that horse. I'm answering your questions here. I'm giving so you I'm, an I'm, answer. I'm, I'm telling you that this is the answer I'm, we're giving to you. We'll have a vote on it, just like we've done with every other item. But you're, what I research on that, your property is in the city. You just got done stating you called the courts, the juvenile court, the sheriff. I'm That's the direction. You. This is not the county commission's choice. When you start your process, go to the source. Don't bring it to the county commission because we have no, it has to be investigated, there has to be a criminal complaint. But this, this particular item that you continue to bring up to us is not the county commission's business. So that's the response that I have for it. Does anybody else on the county commission have anything to add? And if not, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve to compensate Mr. Chatches for his damage to his property. I'd like to know what the amount is you're seeking, George. The, uh... The damage to the windows, I, I think, was a couple hundred off the top of my head. The most recent was uh, about 150 for plexiglass that was uh, broken into, or broken when they entered with that uh, legal out. So it's about, about 350 bucks? Uh, approximately. Off the top of my head, but I'm going to tell you approximately. Do you have insurance on your buildings? No, I do not. Okay. Anybody else got a question, Mr. Chatches, on this item? The bike parking gate comment. Yeah, yeah so. County and city governments can't be liable to property owners for injuries of property and restitution. It would just be nonsensical because we have hundreds of victims in our communities every year who receive some sort of theft, injury, or medical bills because of some violent crime. In those cases that we can prove, I'm saying another follow-up test right now, George, um, to the last one. Um, in the case we can prove, sometimes we can get a judge to order restitution to the victims. That's the process that has been accepted throughout our country. Now, um, and, and if we can't prove it, or if the sheriff didn't make arrest, or if they didn't, for whatever reason, they didn't capture the evidence, those cases aren't submitted sometimes to the agencies correctly, or they are submitted but they're lacking evidence and you can't move forward and try to capture restitution. For example, that elk structure was destroyed here a few months ago, and we are, the office is trying, our office is trying to prosecute that juvenile and capture restitution, but that process takes some time. We have to show up to court to be able to complete prosecution, and then you have to get a court's order to order restitution. Sometimes we don't have control over that. This county commission certainly doesn't have control over it. And if you pay George for his damage that he suffered at the hands of some alternate third party, then you better be prepared to pay for everyone, because as George says, equal protection is the law. And there's no way this county commission can pay for every tool stolen out of a shed, every hospital bill when someone gets injured, or every beer stolen from a convenience store. There is a separate process for that. And we all know that George knows this as well. You all know I gave you proof. But, hold on, that doesn't belong, I mean, this is your opportunity to, to complain about public officials. If you want to complain about my office or the sheriff for not doing their job, you have that right to do so in public comment. But it's not going to net you your restitution. Someone needs to do their job, period. No one's going to pay you from this body your restitution. Someone needs to do their job. Sometimes those jobs are done, and sometimes sometimes things don't get done. You know that. Not acceptable, Counselor. You know that. I understand that. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else on the commission may add on to this. So what I'm going to do is make a motion to uh, ask for a motion to approve to compensate George Chatches for the damage done to his property at the old Eighth grade school on High Street. Do I have a motion to compensate Mr. Chatches? No, to approve. Motion by Shane. Do I have a second? We have a motion by Shane to approve the payment. Do we have a second? Last call. We have the motion. We do not have a second. Dies for lack of Okay. Item four. Item four is discussion only. Discussion only, we'll go into that, about Nevada Northern Railroad and the Historical Railroad Foundation Board.
having to follow open meeting law and being under the jurisdiction of the county, George Chatches. My answer to that is Nevada Northern Railway is owned by the city of Ely and managed by the Railroad Foundation, not White Pine County. We are part of that. We, we use it as our tourism tool. We do not have any authority over the railroad. I'll grant you that. You should never put jurisdiction in the county. I didn't imply that. What I'm concerned about is they receive over $240,000 of room tax from the White Pine County Touring Rec Board. There's no accountability. The rumor is there's tens of thousands of dollars in it, uh, been taken in an embezzlement. But we can't, we can't get to that. We need to know where that money is. Or is it just a rumor? If there has been embezzlement, there's an obligation to come forward with the information. You're not getting that. And if they're a private entity, they do not qualify for that money. And if they want that money, they have, to, they have an obligation to show where that money is being spent. It's taxpayers' money, okay, not George, theirs. You bring this up to the county all the time, and this is the discussion. Well, come on. Excuse me, but we're, we're answering your questions here, George. And the answer to this question is we have no authority. This is a city owned and ran by the Railroad Foundation, not by the county. county. So, so George, I'm answering your questions so we can get these out of the way once and for all. Anybody else got any discussion for George on this item? I'd like to hear from RDA again just to address the open meeting portion of it. Yeah, the, uh, the nexus between George's complaint, George's complaint about the railroad operating without open meeting law or the transparency, uh, whatever they're doing. The nexus to this commission is this commission appoints two members to believe, two members to the Tour and Rec Board, is that right? Or is it three? Two. Two members, which no, is not a majority. No, three, one. No, three. no, we have one commissioner that sits on it. Yeah, and then we appoint somebody else. We appoint someone yeah. else to represent business, I think, uh, hotel, maybe even three. They do them all except for the city appointing. That's it. So what he's talking about is he's asking for some accountability from the county commission over those individuals we appoint because they're not holding the railroad accountable for funds that they're, they're saying. That's another way to explain what George's complaint is before the commission. That would be another agenda item for another time, wouldn't it? Well, sort of. We can talk about it at least on okay. this part. So um, we have to remove those members if we're not satisfied with them. And the removal process for the tour and rec board is one of the most narrowly tailored, we've tried to remove people from touring before. They have to, um, i got to pull it up, but they have to have, only if they lack the qualifications, I think. If we come, that's what the statute says, George. Do you want me to give you the... No, uh, I know it. I'm a lawyer. I understand this. I looked at this exhaustively look to, to, those members, then. to remove members prior. And we are, once we appoint a tour and rec member, our hands are tight. We have to make a determination at the time to meet the qualifications, at the time to meet the qualifications of the industry for the seat that we're appointing them to. Beyond that, there's no statutory removal mechanism outside of malfeasance of office huh. if they are prosecuted, okay? Yeah. But it's not malfeasance, George. And they are only one member. You're asking for an entire board to essentially be removed. It's okay with me. Okay. They so, so, absence of some sort of public official malfeasance of office, that is a political decision of that board. They hire their own attorney. They stand freely once appointed. Okay? It's not for this commission to be able to remove them. It's a whole other body. They have to be removed through a 